Please come out. Let's meet you. Now let's clap because here they're judges. A quick from this side to this side. Yes, from this side, on the, found, the founding director of Cyclotron Road, Ilan Gur. In the middle, the investment director of SAEV, Diraj Malkani. And all the way over there is a partner with Rockport Capital Partners, Abe Yokel. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, the first entrepreneur to come up. Uh, please welcome uh, CEO of Grobe, Grove, I apologize, Gabe Blanchett. My name's Gabe, and I founded a company called Grove to help people grow their own fresh, healthy food. Uh, my co-founder, Jamie, introduced me to a new way of farming three years ago when he hacked together this Rube Goldberg machine in our MIT fraternity room. Now, Jamie told me that he was going to build an ecological farm that combines a fish tank with a gardening bed so we could grow food all year round. But I quickly explained to him that's not how agriculture works. Uh, farming is about big fields. It's about big pesticides and big fertilizers. It's about fields thousands of miles away. It's about corn, wheat, soy, maximum productivity, and cheap calories. But Jamie smiled. He said, it doesn't have to be like this. He reminded me that in the 1940s, in this country, backyard victory gardens grew over 40% of the vegetables that we consumed here. Sure enough, two months later, it, in, our, in the middle of Boston winter, we were farmers, him and I. Our air was cleaner. The ecosystem became a centerpiece for all of our friends. And we were harvesting fresh food every single day from that system. I mean, I learned how to cook with sorrel, it's the sour leaf, with spicy mizuno, with Cuban oregano, with food that I didn't even know existed before that system. That was when we realized that bringing personal farming devices to homes and to classrooms around this world is a massive opportunity for social good, but also to build a profitable business. So we built an ecological farm in a box. Our product is called the Grove Ecosystem, and it's based on a natural symbiotic relationship between fish and plants called aquaponics. You feed the fish, the fish fertilize the, the, fish fertilize the crops, and the crops clean the water so that you don't have to clean the aquarium. Now we've sold hundreds of units since launching six months ago, and we'll do well over a million dollars in revenue this year. We've had vi vi uh, videos that have gone absolutely viral. We had one that got over 10 million views. <laughs> So dozens of people have been growing in their Grove ecosystems for the past year. And we're installed in schools from Boston to the South Bronx, where, where teachers use the ecosystem and the curriculum that we provide to teach their kids how to farm. Heck, MIT researchers are using the Grove ecosystem to simulate the controlled environment farming conditions that will eventually sustain life on Mars. So the business model is pretty simple. We ship the ecosystem for $4,500 directly to homes, to restaurants, to offices, fully assembled and ready to grow. Every month or two, our customers buy curated seeds, fish food, and supplies right through the mobile app called Grove OS. A Grove OS communicates with sensors right to the ecosystem to control the efficient LED lights, the fans, and the pumps. Now we get all of the data back from each ecosystem as well. So Grove OS, that app, gives you a green thumb. It literally teaches you how to farm. It's like Farmville, but in real life. Now, in your ecosystem, you can grow a small bowl of salad every single day. Or you can have all your fresh culinary herbs for cooking right there at arm's reach. Or you can harvest crops like strawberries and peppers and tomatoes right in your ecosystem in the dead of winter. But perhaps most importantly, we're here to inspire the next generation of ecological stewards. So if you think this is important or cool, then I ask you to consider pre-ordering the ecosystem today for your living room, for your office, or for your kids' classrooms. Or donate one for one of the hundreds of teachers that's reached out to us and wants one in their school. After all, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach our children how to farm, They'll nourish us and our planet for the rest of our lives. That's Grove. Thank you, guys. Love the passion. Phenomenal pitch. How low can you lower your costs? Sure. Uh, appliances, whenever they've been introduced in the past 100 years, have been between 
$5,000, $10,000, $12,000, it will follow a similar curve. I think under $2,000, uh, we'll see much more sort of mass market appeal. Your thoughts, Rush? Love the idea. Great idea. Big vision. Um, good luck. Very exciting. Thank you. I live uh, in Oakland, California. My wife sent me a little clip yesterday of my son pulling a huge carrot out of a community farm in our neighborhood. No option but to say this is awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Tom Cridland. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Cridland, and that is also the name of my sustainable fashion brand. I started it two years ago when it wasn't actually a sustainable fashion brand. It was a brand specializing in pants. I had no business experience, and I had no fashion experience. I was 23. Um, and I got a $9,000 startup loan and naively tried to start a business. Um, I went on struggling for a year, and eventually I managed to create a business that started making some money. Um, I had the opportunity to make these trousers that you might be questioning um, in pink for Rod Stewart. I had the opportunity to make um, more um, perhaps classic colors for the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio, Hugh Grant, and Ben Stiller, Daniel Craig. And that's really what got the ball rolling. So after a year, my brand, Tom Cridland, was you know, on the straight and narrow. The reason why I'm here, however, and why I'm speaking to you about sustainability is because I released a product last year called the 30-year sweatshirt. And the reason why I decided to do this is twofold. Firstly, I discovered after a year in the fashion business that fashion is the world's second most polluting industry after oil. And the second reason why I decided to come out with a 30-year sweatshirt is because I watched a documentary called The True Cost by my friend Andrew Morgan, which really unravels just how grim the world of fast fashion is and just how much damage it's doing to the planet. I would also add that it's ripping you off and also putting responsible brands out of business. So what was my answer to fast fashion and my answer to try and make the idea of sustainability in fashion cool? It was pretty simple. And actually, it was described by a Financial Times journalist the other day as silly on numerous levels. He did go on to say that it was quite brilliant. And the reason why I think our concept is, is one that works and one that is bringing sustainability into consumers' choices when shopping for fashion is because it's actually just a desirable product that's very simple to understand. The 30-year sweatshirt is a sweatshirt that we guaranteed to last for 30 years. Why is that a good thing? Because we're stopping fast fashion retailers applying the idea of planned obsolescence into designing clothing. I know planned obsolescence is something that, in some cases, is great when you're coming out with a new iPhone or a new computer. But when you're designing a white t-shirt, why should you have to be going back to replace it every two years, or a navy sweatshirt? So we partnered with suppliers who had been in business for over 50 years making beautiful clothing. And we designed a luxury garment and we sell it direct to consumers online at an accessible price point. This means that for many, the 30th sweatshirt was an impulse buy. So the mission statement with this project, guaranteeing a plain sweatshirt to last for 30 years, was to bring sustainable fashion to the mainstream. Have we been successful? I would argue that we've got a long way to go and that not every consumer is shopping with sustainability in mind for their clothing. But we have managed to talk about the pros of sustainable fashion on NBC, CBS, the BBC, Reuters, and we've been in papers from the New York Times and, of course, um, recently in, in Fortune. Thank you very much for that uh, plug. And uh, I would argue that despite, as I said, the fact that we've got a long way to go, we've got a great business model here. And I'm sure the judges over here have one burning question. How is guaranteeing a garment for 30 years, a sustainable business model, surely you won't get any repeat business. But the answer to that one is pretty simple. We can come out with new designs, new garments, but it should be the new in the design that is keeping our customers coming back, not just churning out the same old garments that are systematically made to fall apart like the fast fashion retailers are doing. So I've got nine seconds left. Please visit tomcridland.com if you're interested in finding out more. Thank you very much. Uh, Rush, let's start with you. So you never told us how much your sweatshirt is going to cost. It's 65 pounds, so about 95 dollars. Expensive. 
I feel like brought up too much on fast fashion, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like there are people who like fashion, they want to replace their clothes basically every year anyway, and then there are people like me who buys three pairs of the same shoes because I just never want to go back. So here's my question. Can you make me cool? Uh, I, I'd argue that you're already very cool. So <laughs> no, no Good answer. I love the pants. I love the shoes even more. You, Thank you. Do you design those? Uh, I do not de design these. These are made by Burberry. Ah, affiliate marketing. There we go. <laughs> I shouldn't really be plugging them. <laughs> so I, I think the, the real question that I would have is uh, looking at this business is, can you turn the brand into a movement? Because if it's just one niche brand, it's a tough business. But if it's a movement, that gets very interesting. I think that in many cases I'm talking about sustainable fashion as a movement when I'm promoting my brand as opposed to just promoting my brand. Um, I've been on sort of more heavyweight kind of talk shows where they're more interested in sustainable fashion and they literally say, don't talk too much about your brand. Um, so I think we're doing, doing a lot. It's a win-win. I love doing what I do, but I think the insatiable greed of fast fashion retailers is something that's just unnecessary, really. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, uh, we have the co-founder of PV Pure, Hada El Assad. Hi there. I'm here to tell you about our small-scale solar-powered water purification systems. So accessing off-grid water is difficult and it's expensive. Water purification can be a very energy intensive process and many of those that need this purified water are off grid or outside of the limits of water municipal infrastructure. In the world, over 700 million people lack access to clean water and affordable water. And usually those people have to turn to either unsafe, unpurified water or to very expensive bottled water. In Mexico alone, one of the highest consumers of bottled water per capita in the world, this leads to a very big number. People there can spend up to 20% of their income on clean water, and that number can be as high as 45% around the world. That's money that should and could be spent on better medication, education, or transportation and the likes. So this has prompted a lot of money to go into water projects. So why is there reported hundreds of millions of dollars being wasted? The key to an appropriate solution is to solve it with the most environmentally and economically sustainable technology. For water, one size certainly does not fit all. And that's what PVPR tries to address. That's why our systems are customized, they're modular, so we use commercially off-the-shelf components which are, which are for reuse of manufacturing and for rapid maintenance. They're scalable anywhere in between household use to small-scale utility. They're smart. We equip them with a highly optimized controller. They're sustainable, powered by renewable energy, as well as reducing the need for bottled water. And they're affordable. We produce water at one-fifth the cost per liter of existing solutions. Finally, they're reliable. By offering a decentralized on-site solution, we give the end user full control of the quality and the quantity of their water. How we do this? We take key parameters from the field. That includes your climatic variables, your, so your source water chemistry, your demand, and a library of commercially available components. We add in our streamlined design approach, which can provide a optimal design, uh, as well as your system sizing. We have a smart control system, which allows for non-expert user operation and maintenance, as well as the ability to monitor and adapt to, in, to fluctuating environmental parameters, such as intermittent solar energy, as well as spikes in salinity. Finally, we add in our optimized maintenance schemes so that you're not over-maintaining this higher operating costs or under-maintaining, so that we're able to preserve and prolong the system performance and lifetime. And what that equals is huge slashes in capital costs for your plants by not paying for over-design, over-capacity, and allowing people to really find a solution that fits for them without the need for infrastructure development. Maintenance costs are reduced, and our highly efficient system reduces energy consumption and costs. In some cases, we can pay back the system in one year just based on bottled water savings. So we so we. Showed that this worked in Mexico, 
Here is our system in action. Um, not only are we meeting the need for clean water in these villages, but we're able to generate a secondary economy where people can sell water to themselves and reinvest it back into their community. We're selling hardware with associated maintenance contracts, servicing contracts, we're exploring leasing options, and we're also partnering with small-scale utility applications. The end market is huge from schools, hospitals, hotels, and the commercial market is just as big as a humanitarian. So all our hearts are in it, so thanks for listening. Elon, let's go the other way. Let's start with you. Um, this is amazing. I mean, water is such a you know, core, core of life, and, and clearly the passions there. Wouldn't, you, talk, you said two words at the same time, customizable and scalable, and each of these installations is clearly going to be really customized. So how do you think about scaling the impact from a business perspective? So from a business perspective, sorry, from a business perspective, we're, we're really focusing a lot of our, our energy into kind of the manufacturing strategy. And some of our patents kind of go into the modularity components of it so that because we're a modular system, we can scale pretty rapidly by using prefabricated racks. And we've kind of designated our, um, our customization based on region and the complexity of the water chemistry in that region itself. Great, great idea. I think you buried the lead in the last slide. I think you should have the first slide says says, Bang MIT technology saves the world. Thank you. How do you distribute your product? So we're building a network of on-site distributors um, in their host countries. We're focusing primarily in Mexico because there is a huge need there. Um, and there's actually a lot of technical know-how as far as small system construction, especially in humanitarian applications. I love the focus on the bottom of the pyramid. I, I would have to say as an investor, I, I love the idea of water uh, in general, though. I think uh, if I had a dime for every good investable water deal I had seen, I'd probably have about 20 cents. <laughs> Hopefully we'll change that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have our final entrepreneur from Barcelona Housing Systems, uh, Cesar Martinel. Okay, thanks for the opportunity to allowing us to introduce the, our solution. It's our solution is a solution to a global problem. Uh, and it's a problem that is um, a combination of several things. First of all, the growth of the population, the global population has reached 7 billion. And half of this population is moving from rural to urban. So what's happening is the cities do not have any formula or any tool to solve this increasing, uh, you know, uh, urbanization. So w when families arrive to cities, <clears throat> they generate slums. And slums are a real problem for health, uh, security, safety, everything. What happened, uh, the, the, the third uh, part of this equation is that traditional construction cannot solve that problem because it's too expensive, too slow, and it's not green, okay? So what, uh, well, we are planners, uh, we're, one of the oldest uh, planning and architectural firms in Europe, and uh, we're celebrating our first century this year. So we know that the city of Barcelona have solved uh, a big growth 160 years ago. Uh, we we grow the, our, uh, the size of our city from 12 to 15 times in less than 48 years. So we have a proven, you know, grid, a European grid that, that, that works. So uh, Bar Barcelona Housing Systems, what is, what is doing is integration in the Barcelona grid that's proven, several uh, construction technologies that we have discovered that we have reached, and in these this, this technologies, uh, different technologies available today, are um, uh, uh, over design. We have designed something like a Lego concept, very simple, very, very little number of pieces, where it can be fabricated in on-site plants, managed, with, managed by local unskilled labor, and these plants produce um, a multifamily, multi-story building that is integrated in a city block that's scalable, okay? So we can control the number of units by the, by the number of uh, city blocks that we are developing in that specific city. And that's extension of city, okay? So, <laughs> to, be, to be a good solution, you have to be not only inexpensive, 
you have to be fast and you have to be green. Okay, so we, we have reached the, the solution where per crew, once the factory is set, per crew and per, and, uh, per shift, we can, we can have a building a day. Uh, uh, sorry, a building a week, okay? And this is, a, is a, a building that, depending on the, the local regulations, you can have 16, 24, or, or, or 32 families. Okay, uh, so and the, the thing is that our solution is green, it's really green. We don't use any water, we don't use any concrete, and you, uh, we don't produce any waste. And that was very, very important on the equation, okay? So uh, why we are better, or we think we're better than traditional construction? First of all, because we, we use less land, we optimize the land. And 25% uh, of our population has access, direct ac access to small gardens where they can grow their own vegetables, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So it's, it's not only uh, minimizing the use of land for, for, the, uh, for the streets, but it's only providing 25% to the population, or the population of our extensions of cities, a real garden. We, are, we made a very effective uh, logistic solution, so we're not shipping any air. It's like a kind of IKEA concept, for, you know, using flat panels. And we are integrating into, in, every, uh, in every one of our buildings all kinds of renewable uh, you know, technologies for uh, electricity, solar, etc. So we are in trying to impact. Time is up. Time is up. Oh, sorry. You got a final thought? Quick one? Very quick? No, no. It's, it, it, I was... I was I was not, okay, no, no problem, no problem. Uh, Durash, start with you. Yeah, no, g great idea. It's finally great to see productivity in the construction and building space. I know we heard earlier that in industry say it's stagnant, so it's great that you're bringing this. What does it cost per square foot, and how much gross margin do you think you can retain uh, in this we, business? We, we have, a, we have a, a, clear, a clear formula. The cost, our cost would be 25 to 15 to 25% less than traditional construction in any location, in any, in any global location. And how much, how profitable is it? Because typically construction is very low profit business. No, uh, that's an industrial business. It's, it's not a real estate business. We, we play on other people's land, government normally. And so we, we're not, uh, you don't have to understand the project as a, as a developer. It's, it's an industrial solution. Hmm. Love the vision. Uh, just from a pitch perspective, uh, I'm not quite sure what you're selling, whether it's products, services, et cetera. No, we sell we sell a product, we sell a building. You're, se you're selling sell full building, building so you're manufacturing as well. Yeah. Okay. No, we we provide the technology to manufacture on site to the real players, local players. Elon. So I mean, I, I have a sense of where this is now, but you're a designer, you have a vision. You know, what could this turn into in the future what with was, with new technologies? What what could you design into these buildings? <laughs> What would be your dream there? No, let's, let's do a little bit of history. With that technology, we built the Guggenheim Museum Bilbao almost 20 years ago. So we know it works. But instead of being eco-architects, uh, eco-architects, sorry, we, we, we decided to be eco-architects, so econo economic and ecologic. And this is why we, we are completely sure the world can be changed a little bit through, through this technology. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so funny story. When I told you before to text something, I totally told you the wrong number. So someone somewhere is really confused as to why their phone has been blowing up. So let's try this again one more time. Please pull out your phones. I think it's going to be up on the screen. Please text to 22333. That's two twos and three threes. Um, and then when you do that text E2016 to that number, you'll be able to join the poll. You should get an instant text back confirming. Then you will key in your vote. As you can see up here, A for Grove, B for Tom Cridland, three for PV Pure, D for Barcelona Housing Systems. Um, some people have asked that we, we don't have real official metrics. It's the coolest company. Um, that means whatever it means to you. It means whoever you would have wanted to sit with at the eighth grade lunch table. It means, <laughs> I don't know, you know, whichever company you would most like to someday be able to tell people, hey, I saw that entrepreneur 20 years ago, that person who everybody knows is a household name now. Uh, or it could just be uh, the person's pants you like the most, although that's probably kind of narrowing it and limiting it um, a little <laughs> bit more. Um, so we're getting pretty close. Uh, I want to, while we're doing this, I just want to quickly thank our judges so much. Um, Ilan, Diraj, Abe, uh, thank you so much for judging. How are we doing? Are you guys, are we typing in? Is it working? 
Is it working for people? Sign up? Yeah, you get, we sign, what, this, is, this is complicated technology. We almost had a fifth company, which was simply an online polling company, but it didn't seem to, to play with the, with the theme of, of what you guys were doing. And you guys could actually all put this together, right? You could build a building, and you could provide the water systems, and you could do the farming, and Tom, I don't know, people would, well, they, unless it's a nudist colony, they got to wear something. So this could all work. I'm, as you can see, I'm supposed to vamp, and I'm kind of out of material. So let's see I've, I've got a question. Oh, we, we have a winner. There we, go. we have a winner. I'd like to announce uh, congratulations to Grove is the winner of our competition. <laughs> uh, I, want, I, simply, I do want to thank all of our entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. I want to thank our judges. I will let you guys exit out. Thank guys, you. appreciate it. Thank you so much. So much. So much.